Folks, before we get started with this video, I want to let you know we're going to use power tools, tractors, wood chippers, chainsaws, John Deere Gator. We're going to have a whole lot of fun today working on the farm. I do not claim to be in any shape, form, or fashion an expert on any of these pieces of equipment. So if you have any advice, please leave it for us down in the comments and we can all learn from you. It doesn't help if you think you know everything and you're a sarcastic jerk. So leave nice comments, help us all out, and we can all learn from each other in this wonderful community we call YouTube. All right. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm today. We're gonna to be working out in the field with the new wood chipper today. So if you caught us a few videos back, we got a wood chipper from Titan Attachments and we've been out trying to work with it, but we broke a shear pin. I got the shear pin problem solved. I figured out how to run the machine a little bit better. Basically what I was doing was releasing the clutch a little bit too fast and that was causing the shear pin to break because it takes so much torque to spin the flywheel on that thing. So we're gonna put the Jeep project, which is back here on hold for a little bit. We got some farm stuff to do today. We're going to get busy using the wood chipper. All right. Stony Bridge. Farm Stony Bridge. Stony Bridge Farm. First things first, we got to ride down here to the uh, garden shed, to the honey shack and get all of our power tools. Garden's gonna to be getting some work here in the next few videos, so I'm excited about that. I'm gonna go in here and gather up some supplies. Really excited, just got our new motion light and our new security cameras. Kinda of nice, we can keep an eye on the chickens and keep an eye on all the sheds. Home security and home safety is something that's really important to me if you haven't watched any of my videos. to work. I ain't afraid to play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. Guys, if you've been following the channel for a long time, you'll know that all this area that we're going to used to be forest. So I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see real quick. All of what's pasture out here used to be forest and we just picked a few select trees to save. Before we get all the way up to the tractor, which is up there in the field, you might've saw it. We're gonna go over here and cut this one limb that I just keep forgetting to cut. And every time I ride up here, I'm like, man, I gotta cut that limb, man. So I'm gonna do it while I'm thinking about it for sure. That's our tobacco barn back there. It's what was used to cure tobacco back in the old days. So this is the limb I need to cut. You'll see it's hanging down right there. It's kind of impeding our way. It's in the way every time I come up here with something, a truck or a tractor or something like that. It's an oak tree limb. We're gonna cut that. And when we get done, we'll bring the tractor back down to the tractor shed. On the way, we'll stop and we'll chip up that limb. This chipper is gonna be super duper awesome for the farm. It's gonna help us to restore the land. This is an old dilapidated tobacco farm. And basically it was just farmed to death. In other words, when I sent my soil samples off for my soil here on the farm, it had like 0.03%, which is nothing of organic matter. So we're trying to restore the land. This is our corn garden and you'll see more of the corn garden. This will be where we have our corn and we'll have our pumpkins and stuff like that later on in the year, in the springtime. So pretty cool. We've got hay bales and we've had the goats out here on this. So we'll rake all this stuff up, clean it up, till it up and plant some corn soon. Awesome. I don't want this to turn into a farm tour video, but it is a vlog. That's our 72 inch woods bush hog or brush cutter. And under these two piles, under that tarp right there is a bunch of old barn wood. And these are old barn beams that we salvaged from barns that we took down here on the farm. And this came off of my grandpa's barn that fell down on his farm, which is probably 20 miles away. Good stuff. We made a video about that. Let's get this limb down, get it out of the way. I want to show you the tools that I'm using. This is a steel. HT56C. This is a dedicated, I call it a high limb saw, but um, there are several different words for it, nomenclature for it, um, pole saw or whatever. It's a dedicated pole saw. I bought those everything in one, all in one, like weed eater, uh, tiller, pole saw. I bought that stuff before and it really just doesn't cut the mustard when it comes to this kind of job, this kind of work. So this gives me a reach somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, I'm six foot five-ish, so it gives me a reach of about 16 feet or so, something like that. 
plenty to get that limb off. I'll show you how to cut a limb real quick, the safe way to do it. We're going to put our headgear on, but I'm not going to put the chainsaw chaps on for this. Hopefully I don't regret that. We're just going to put our little helmet on here, hearing protection and helmet and face shield. Anytime you're cutting overhead, for sure have that helmet. A little bit of cold start action here. Here we go. Give it a little bit of time, let it warm up a little bit before we start railing on it. We'll talk to you about this limb we're going to cut. So this is the limb that we're going to be cutting. Imagine this is the tree. What we're going to do with our limb is we're going to do an undercut first, and then we're going to go back behind the undercut and cut the back side of it. In other words, we'll cut here, and then we'll go back and we'll cut here. And that will allow the limb to drop and basically kick off of the side of the tree. If we just went under it and cut, it would pinch the saw. If we just went on top of it and cut, it could cut it and make it kind of swing down like that and whack me or whack the camera or take somebody out. So this is what we're gonna do. Once again, undercut first, then we'll go back here and we'll cut on top and the limb will break right off and fall right off the tree and then we'll cut the little nub that's left. Pretty cool, watch. <laughs> That's a simple way to cut a limb off when you're using a pole saw. We don't have any more high limbs to cut today. We got chore number one done. We're gonna go up here to this tree I dropped the other week. This is an oak tree. It's a white oak tree and it's been standing dead for about a year. That's why we cut it. So as you can see, we've got a lot of brush. This will be the first time we've used the wood chipper here and we're gonna be throwing oak through it. So it's gonna put it to the test. A lot of the trees that we've been cutting here on the farm are kind of a softer wood, like a poplar, but this will really put it to the test. Now I'm gonna walk over here real quick and we'll show you the wood chipper. This is from Titan Attachments. We ordered this probably three or four weeks ago. It's been raining so much we couldn't really use it. This is the BX62S and it'll run somewhere between 30 and 60 horsepower, I believe. And this Massey Ferguson 240, a really nice tractor is set up. It runs 41 PTO horsepower. So hopefully it'll sling some wood pretty good. This is the hopper. I can aim this hopper any direction I wanna aim. And basically I want it to shoot out into the field here and I'll slowly rotate it around so that I get some biomass on this soil. In other words, the soil pretty much has no biologic material in it. Over the next few years, all that stuff will rot and make the grass pop. Now, what I mean by making the grass pop, I just mean that it's gonna provide some substance for moisture and for worms and for critters and biologic material to grow in the soil. If you look back there behind me, you might be able to see it, but there's a huge pile of wood chips from the Asphalt Tree guys when they came and cut the power line right away. If you can get your hands on some of that stuff, I totally recommend it for your garden, for your yard, or for your farm. Contact. We're going to give the tractor probably 10 minutes or so to warm up while I am cutting this log up right here real quick. If it's good enough wood, we'll use some of this because it's big enough where we could get some lumber cuts out of it too. And we're going to have a portable sawmill out here to the farm for long. <laughs> well, a dull chainsaw. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hop up here and kind of explain what I'm doing. So the PTO shaft is engaged and that's the part that spins behind the tractor that spins the chipper. It's engaged with a little handle right here. I want my RPMs to be down. I want good operating temperature and I want to gently release that PTO shaft. And that's what I was doing wrong the other day. This thing is a heavy, heavy piece of machinery and I can feel it binding up right now let's see here what you have to do basically is make sure that the PTO shaft is not under load when you engage it if you do 
it's gonna break a shear pin and that's just what I learned. I also contacted Titan Attachments about this and asked them about it and they basically just said you need to release the PTO a little bit slower and make sure it isn't under load, there's nothing stuck in there. Now I'm going to rev up my engine a little bit. And I'm going to put my hearing protection on. <laughs> Slowly bring those RPMs up. The way this thing works is it's ran on the PTO shaft and basically there's a huge flywheel in here that just spins really, really fast. It's really, really heavy. So when you throw a stick in there, the weight of the flywheel is doing the cutting, not so much the tractor. So if you're cutting something a little bit bigger, you need to make sure it's a little bit shorter. In other words, you can put in a 15 foot long piece this big, but if it's this big, six inches, five or six inches, which is basically the limit of this machine, you wanna make sure it's a little bit shorter so the tractor has time to catch back up. Cool. Hearing protection, eye protection, and even head protection would be a good idea. For sure, some gloves. I'm gonna break in a new set of gloves today. See how I throw those in there? It's basically a self-feeding system. It just kind of slides down in through. Doing a great job. That oak is some really, really hard wood. So far, so good. Everything's working out great. I'm just gonna get you a little time lapse of me cleaning up all this mess right here. And we'll come back and tell you all about the chipper and whether I'm happy with it or not. I'm a little worried about putting some of this bigger stuff in there. That oak is pretty hard stuff. I wouldn't worry so much about maple or poplar or something like that, but oak or hickory or something like that. Putting stuff six inches or bigger in there, if it's dry, it's gonna tax it a whole lot. And it could tax the tractor a whole lot too. So I'll be careful these first few times. As you can see, it did a pretty good job. It chipped up basically all the small brush, anything that was basically under six inches. I like the fact that I can aim this so you can see my wood chips. I can spray them out in a pattern that way that doesn't make a big pile of wood chips and I can spread them out on the land a little bit better. Very happy with the wood chipper purchase. Like I said, there'll be a link in the video description if you decide you wanna take a look at one of these. It's a Titan Attachments wood chipper. Guys, pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, click that little bell icon. It'll notify you when I post a new video and we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right, woo! You know, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge.